How's everybody doing today? My name is Master Zero, and welcome back to another reaction video. This time we are reacting to 1000 Kilometer Cable to the Stars, the Skyhook, by, in a nutshell. <laughs> Alright, it's been a long day of recording. Uh, I actually, uh, what's it called? I changed up my stuff, so this is how I did the system of me uh, doing the game. So hopefully, I, I really enjoyed the way it looked, so I'm gonna see if that I will find a way to make it work on just my regular reaction videos, and then I'll just switch it over from there. So this is kind of a test, not really a test. I know it works, so... Yeah, I don't know why I'm explaining, but I thought I'd end this uh, day of recording right by reacting to In a Nutshell, and this is his newest one that somehow slipped under my radar. I don't know why it did, but it should be really, really exciting because it's talking about space and the skyhook. This should be really, really interesting. So without any further ado, here is 1000 Kilometer Cable to the Stars, the skyhook. Getting to space is hard. Yeah, right it is. now, it's like going up a mountain <laughs> in a unicycle with a backpack full of explosives. Oh, no. Incredibly slow, you can't transport a lot of stuff, Aww. and you oh. might die. A rocket <laughs> you might needs die. to reach a velocity of about 40,000 kilometers an hour to escape from Earth. That's not a lot. To get to that speed, rockets are mostly containers for fuel with a tiny tip of payload. There you go. This is bad if you want to go I to love the planet birds. because you need a lot of heavy stuff if you want to survive and maybe even come back. Yes. So is maybe. there a way to get to space maybe with less back. fuel and more payload? Maybe. I'm sure he's going to tell us that really soon after the really awesome intro that I keep talking about. A nice thing that solved most of our transport problems on Earth is what you call infrastructure. Whether it's roads for cars, ports for ships, or rails for trains, we've made it easier about to the get last to one? places. We can apply the same solution to space travel. Space infrastructure will make getting into orbit and out to the moon, Mars, and I was about to say, kind of like Star Wars, and I see and the cheaper. lightsaber and TIE fighter. Great. But what exactly is space infrastructure? A Unlike giant Earth slingshot. Unlike space elevator, which is currently science fiction, there is a simple yet promising technology that does not require new science, magic materials, or huge investments, and that has been tested successfully in orbit already. A cable and a weight. There you go. Known as a tether. Yay! The concept is <laughs> so simple, it's surprising. What if we put tethers, hundreds or thousands of kilometers long, into space and had spacecraft use them as ladders to climb to higher altitudes and gain speed? Yeah. This concept is known as the skyhook. Or a really awesome it slingshot. even better if we make it spin. A counterweight holds a long cable in place while it rotates around a circle. A rotating tether slows down its tip relative to the ground at the bottom and speeds it up at the top like a catapult. This or means catapult. that you can transfer energy from like the tether slingshot and belly. get a massive boost when released, more or less for free, equal to twice the tether's rotation velocity. The specialized fibers already exist that can survive the extraordinary stresses a skyhook would be faced with. Dang. To protect against cuts and collisions from debris and meteorites, we can thread our tether into a web of redundant fibers. Yay! Since our skyhook would pass over the same spot many times a day, this would allow small reusable shuttles to catch up with it. Huh. Of course, it's not that easy. Aww. At its lowest point, the tether's tip is dashing through the atmosphere at around 12,000 kilometers per hour. Because of Earth's atmosphere, we can't lower the skyhook too much or it will get too hot from air friction. And explode. So it will dip to a height of 80 to 150 kilometers and no lower. That's a big cable though. <laughs> to this, we'll need specialized spacecraft that can get to the tether. While this isn't exactly easy, it's still much cheaper than getting a big tin can filled with rocket fuel to go 40,000 kilometers an hour. Cost a shot out of there. Catching the tip will be a challenge too. There's only a short time window of 60 to 90 seconds <laughs> to find a tiny thing Not in the sky can. moving at Mark 12. To make this easier, the tip could have a sort of fishing line, a Bow. kilometer long, with a navigation drone that helps the spacecraft connect. That's clever. Another challenge is keeping our skyhook in orbit. As more and more ships latch onto it and pull themselves up, they use up the momentum that keeps it in place. Uh -huh. If we don't do anything, it will slow down and crash into the atmosphere. Which is a big no-no. Here, we can cheat the universe a bit. The Skyhook is a battery of orbital energy. 
It's possible to balance the payloads coming in and being sent off. Uh -huh. Arriving ships bringing humans and materials home to Earth add energy to the tether, which it can give to other ships departing into space. That's impressive. This way, the tether doesn't lose any energy. The more we use it, the cheaper it gets. I really like that idea. If we're still losing energy with it's each very route, smart. we can recover it with small electric or chemical engines that regularly correct the tether's position. Okay. A set of tethers, one around Earth and one around Mars, could make... Can you imagine if you miss, fast, though? ...straightforward and low-cost so, compared well, to rockets. there we go. The Earth tether would sit in low Earth orbit to grab people and payloads and fling them off to Mars. Just don't throw up. <laughs> the Mars tether catches them and slows them down for a landing on the surface. That's really cool. In the That's a really cool idea. The tether could pick up a vehicle traveling through Mars's thin atmosphere at only about 1,000 kilometers an hour, not much faster than our airliners on Earth, and fling it back to Earth to be caught and lowered down. The How long would that take, though? Trips between both planets from nine months down to five or even three and reduce the scale of the rockets required by between 84 and 96 percent. Never mind. <laughs> even better, people may be able to travel in relative luxury as we could afford to invest in passenger comfort. Tether travel would be first that? class seats You're going to, to space. Together, I don't need any around Earth and Mars could provide the rapid and cost-efficient transportation backbone that would make space travel affordable. But let's go further. Starting from low Still, Mars though, orbit, if you miss it, could boost ships to so the it keeps asteroid belt. in the back of my mind. The first craft sent to a new asteroid would need rockets to slow down at its destination. Subsequent arrivals might find a tether waiting to catch them huh. and send them back for free. Getting to asteroids cheaply so is a major Really, really neat idea. I really like this. System. Precious metals and valuable minerals could be delivered to Mars just and weeks like you said, after it's they were cut out of simple. our asteroid. They would be the perfect building blocks for our interplanetary civilization. But why stop here? Mars moons why? are very convenient. Why would no we? other moons in the solar system orbit that close to their planet? Phobos is so heavy that we don't need to worry about slowing it down, making it That's the perfect a big boy. point for super tethers just heavy under six thousand kilometers long. The lower tip would fly just over the surface of Mars and be very easy to catch. Huh. The upper tip can fling ships all the way to Jupiter and Saturn. Dang. The same super tether can also bring the inner so solar system. Let's just keep system on closer. going. Venus and Mercury are a single swing away. Wouldn't want to get that Unlike close to the Mars, sun, though. They're bursting with solar energy and are rich in minerals. Well, yeah. In the long term, nothing is stopping humanity from constructing a zero propellant transport network for the terrestrial planets centered on the Martian moons. This is really cool. Like, really and cool. Sustainable solution to making space travel affordable and the rest of the solar system accessible for exploitation and exploration. Let's go tethers. Woo! Considering that we have the technology to build them today, there's really no good excuse to wait any longer. Parts of the solar so system saying, are go. far away, but they could be very close. Speaking of stuff that's hard to reach but doesn't have to be, knowledge. Knowledge. From Brilliant knowledge is power. To a universe but I'm gonna stop there. <laughs> but all right, that was that was really really cool. Like, it it just videos like these it ma it makes me want it so much. Like, why don't we do it already? Because, like he said, it's not that difficult. It's actually pretty easy. Like, of course, I'm not gonna go out and do it. But like, people that are actually like made for this kind of stuff, like. That it's their job to think about this stuff. Like, why don't they do it already? Like, I think it's awesome. I think it's amazing. Like, of course, there's not going to be anything there. Like Mars, for example. There's not going to be anything at Mars for us. But we could get there. And it'd be really, really cool. So I, I'm, I'm excited about it now. So thank you, everybody, so much for watching. If you like this video, feel free to leave a like down below because it makes me feel all warm and fuzzy on the inside. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more awesome videos like this one. So with that said, I have been Master Zero. Y'all guys have been fantastic, and I will see y'all in the next episode. Later days.